So today we're uh, looking at uh, another part in our follow series. Its uh, title today is I Live a Life Guided by the Holy Spirit. And um, I'm not sure what comes to your mind when you think of Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Um, but we, we're really wanting to uh, expand on the place of the Spirit of God in our lives. I mean, to ask what is the place of the Holy Spirit in my life is actually to ask the question, what's the place of God in my life? Because the Holy Spirit is, is, is the Spirit of God. It is His third person. Um, and it's Him present uh, with us, in us. And um, there's a number of starting places that people uh, begin with when thinking around the place of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Um, for some people, they, they, they come from the starting place of there being no idea about there being a Holy Spirit. Um, and that's almost, I'd want to suggest, a, an innocent ignorance, all right? So it's not a rude thing. It's, it's, a, it's a genuine unfamiliarity with the, the understanding or the knowledge that God's Spirit is present and he's with us. There are some, on the other hand, who come perhaps from completely the other end of the spectrum there, where they... They, they, they're mocking. <laughs> they actually would ask the question, what's the place of the Holy Spirit in my life? It was interesting yesterday at the Serbian Festival, just some responses from people that the team felt where there was almost a, an edge of mocking behind um, their responses to the question we were asking them. But yet that's where some people are. That's for some people their starting point with the whole place of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And um, it, it's an unserious approach. For other people, their starting point with the question is actually a place of anger. And I find that when you have conversation with, with people who are asking, what is the place of the Holy Spirit? I mean, what is the place of God in my life? And it's got an anger behind it. It's more often than not connected to some kind of life challenge that is outside of my control. And I haven't had an answer for it. And one response that that we have and can work with as human beings is, is anger. And some people have that starting point. For others, there's, a, there's, a, there's an inquisitive, open heart. Um, those who um, have a willingness to learn, to grow, to discover who this Holy Spirit is for themselves. But there's also people who, um, they have a knowledge of him already. Um, they are approaching the question almost as a guidance matter. Um, they, they're a follower. They want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, to be shaped by him for every eventuality in life. Um, everything that is to do with who I am as a person, but everything that's to do with the world in which God has positioned me. And um, so we're not just speaking about, uh, about the Holy Spirit in this. We're actually talking about being guided by the Holy Spirit. So... Um, in preparation for this message, I was thinking back to my childhood. So every Sunday afternoon, I'd sit with the family, we'd have our Sunday roast. Anybody else enjoy these sorts of things, right? So I used to enjoy my Sunday roast with family. And, um, and then my granddad and I would get in the car and we would drive 30, 35 minutes uh, to visit my great-grandmother, Grandma Pentlager. She was called Pen Grandma Pentlager because Pentlager was the place in which she lived. <laughs> so uh, this was my great-grandmother. And um, from young age, I remember going down on a Sunday afternoon to visit her with my grandfather, getting there, and she was always loving and welcoming, and she always had blue ribboned chocolates ready for me on a dish. Um, she always wore her sunglasses, and, and I... I, I it was always a great time. It was a quality time for me and my granddad, but it was also great to go and visit Grand Pentagay. As I grew up, I discovered that she wasn't wearing the sunglasses because it was so sunny all the time. Believe me, Wales is not sunny all the time. <laughs> uh, far from it. She wore sunglasses or dark glasses because she was blind. And as a youngster, I didn't realize this. And it was through Grand Pentagay that I was introduced to the idea of a guide dog. Now, Everybody, everybody loves animals, right? <laughs> if you talk to anyone on the street, they, they, people love animals. People really do have a fondness for dogs. But there's something really spectacular about a guide dog. The way that the guide dog is trained to walk alongside the owner who can't see, to navigate the way um, safely, to get to the destination. 
safely. As I was thinking about this whole thing of being guided by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's not a dog. I'm not comparing him to a guide dog now. It's just a picture, okay? My, my, I, got, I can't remember my great-grandmother having a guide dog. But here's the thing my great-grandmother could do. She could do amazing things getting around the house, her environment, where those walls were, without bumping into a single thing. She, she'd make her way through the house. But as soon as someone is blind, who is blind, steps out of that environment and they're in a new space, it becomes disconcerting. It's, you, you, you rely on someone to be your eyes, right? And that's the thing with the guide dog. The guide dog becomes your sight and, and walks the person to the destination. It's, it's, it's amazing. Next time you see someone with a guide dog, just take a moment to appreciate um, the, the skill and the relationship between the, the, the pet and the person. But what I want to just encourage you to do is to hold this picture in view of being guided where there's darkness, where you can't see, where you're not sure which way to turn, where you're not sure if it's safe or not. Um, because the Holy Spirit is the presence of God with us to guide us through the hard times, through the good times, in every moment. In preparation for the word, I was thinking that there, there are two primary ways that people live, guided every day, that, that gets, it actually gets plenty of space, air time in our lives to, um, to exercise naturally. Um, and the first of those is, is my wants. I want to call them my wants. Um, these are the, the physical desires that I have. Now, now, some physical desires I have are essential to life, right? If I don't drink water, I'm going to die. Um, if, I, if I don't take nourishment into my body, these are physical ones. I'm, it's not going to build my health. I, I need those things to sustain me for, for living. Um, but there's other things that we, we want, which are to do with the, fle uh, with, with the flesh. The Bible uses the word the flesh. Um, so it could be, you know, food. It could be water. It could be exercise. I feel, do you know, if you have those days where you feel, do you know, I just need to get up and go for a walk today, even if it's a five minute walk, but you need that exercise. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes. I can hear some people going, uh -uh, I don't fancy exercise. And I can hear other people going, yes, bring it, bring it. Um, but, but, you know, sometimes we, we need warmth. Our body, our, our body needs warmth. Sometimes we need touch, you know, that just holding of the hand of the friend or family. And you, you just, you need that. You, 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 it's almost a flesh thing. Um, unfortunately, we struggle as well with things where we can, you know, we can overindulge or we can have a lack of those things. But when people are guided by um, their physical desires, you might respond and go, well, OK, I, I, my, my, need, my need right now, my want right now is, is to quench my thirst. So you, you have a drink. But for, it might be that you, you give in to something of a, a, a desire to, you know, look a certain way because I'm 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 completely captivated by the way society views a perfect body. You know, so exercise is a good thing, but a bad thing about exercise is it can become your, your, like your identity. It can be, become everything that you're, you're about in life. And then your, your, your drive is in that direction always. Everything that you do is about getting the perfect abs and all of that sort of thing. And, um, and sometimes, you know, it's, exercise, is, exercise is a good thing, it's a necessary thing, but overindulgence of it is, is not so great. And, and it got me thinking about some of the examples in Scripture where, where people took this in the wrong direction. Now, I could, have, I could have gone straight to the beginning. I could have gone to Adam and Eve, right? I could have gone to them in the garden because they thought that what they needed was to eat this fruit because it would make them more like God. But they completely missed the point that they were already like God. But, but in any case, I could have gone there, but I didn't think that was necessary to share right now. There's another story in the Bible where... The Israelites are told by God, I, I'm, I'm giving you this land, this land I've promised you, go into it and, and inherit it. And they send scouts in and they know that they need to just scout out the land and see what's there. But they come back with a report and they say, we can't do this. And so fear becomes a driver behind them. And so they want to protect and they don't want to put themselves in a place where harm could come to them. Even though they've heard from God, this land is yours, go in and inherit it. Uh, but I could have taken you to David, where David stood on, on the top of a building in the city, overlooking the city, and he sees a woman bathing, and he desires to, to have relationship with her, and there's a whole horrible affair that takes place, 
Um, but actually, I want to take you to someone that we might slip by very easily and not, not think. Um, gave in to the wants of the flesh. And this was one of Jesus' closest followers. His name is Judas, all right? So Jesus had 12 really close followers. They, call, they refer to him in the Bible as, as the disciples. And almost every time we read about Judas, he's mourning. And he's mourning about money. Um, he's mourning about all sorts of things. He's actually a key part in the reason why Jesus is crucified because he gives Jesus up to the authorities for 30 pieces of silver. They, there was a desire in Judas that, that was, was not healthy in terms of sustaining and working with life. And it became a flesh desire of his. And he allowed that to overcoming, overcome him. And by the way, this wasn't a one moment thing. Oh, today I've decided I want 30 pieces of silver. This was almost a long time coming. And I want to invite you to read with me in John chapter 12. I'm going to read from the message translation. Um, because there's a moment where Jesus is invited to a house with his disciples, okay? And so we pick up on this in John chapter 12, verse 2. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oils, un uh, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet. Now, you've got to understand, this is something you just did not do. The foot was the dirtiest part of the body. Like, not just... Physically, but in, in, in the whole framework of thinking, the foot was the part. You, you don't touch this. You've now got to go and get ceremonial, ceremonially cleaned after doing this. But here we see Mary worshipping Jesus, recognising his lordship in her life to such a degree that she breaks open this ointment, pours it on his feet, and with her hair is bowing down, wiping his feet. What a picture of worship and admiration and honour to the Lord Jesus. Um, and he wiped, it says that she wiped them, uh, Jesus' feet with her hair. The fragrance of the oils filled the house. Listen to this. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, even then getting ready to, to, to betray Jesus, said, why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would have easily brought 300 pieces of silver. He said this not because he cared two pennies about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. Now, you might not be someone who embezzles money <laughs> today. Um, what, I'm using, what I'm doing with this story is just showing to you that you can be as close as you feel you can be to the Lord and allow the drive and the desire to be driven by the flesh to overcome you. And that's not a healthy thing. Um, but I mentioned that there are two ways that people live really guided today. The second one is with, with my thoughts. So my, my wants, the flesh, but also my thoughts with my mind. And, and, and this is also a very human thing, right? So we all have been given a uh, uh, created ability to use our minds, to think. It's a natural human thing. Um, we consider, we reason. This is actually a big distinction between us and other mammals, showing that we as human beings are not another animal. All right. Um, there's something that we're able to do in go beyond simple reasoning that, that no other creature on the earth has. And I think there's a reason for reasoning. All right. I really believe that there's a reason for reasoning. It's because we were created to reign. And when that happens correctly, everything flourishes. Um, now, unfortunately, people struggle with this sort of thing. Uh, um, I sometimes do. We, you might as well. Um, but the mind and thought, it's, it's a tool to use. It's actually a skill to, to work with. That's why we learn. That's why education is, is important. Um, you know, strategizing, planning, decision making, weighing up options. If that's, you know, in terms of tasks at your workplace, um, building relationships with neighbours and friends and, and colleagues, all these things actually activate the mind. You, you must use your mind on these things, you know, think about it. <laughs> I've heard that told to me so many times in my earlier days, think, for goodness sake. <laughs> but I want to I wanna just take you to another disciple who um, used his mind and was guided by his mind when in retrospect he shouldn't have. He didn't need to do it. And so I want to invite you to turn to John chapter 21. We're spending all our time in John today. So John chapter 21 verses 1 to 3. 
Um, and we read this. By the way, quick, quick note. Jesus has died, crucified on the cross. He was buried in the tomb and he's risen. And people have started to see him. His disciples, his followers have started to see him and, and have seen him risen, right? So he's no longer dead. And this is where we pick up on the story now. Um, John chapter 21. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, this was John who's writing and his brother James, uh, and two other, others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to, to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. Now, these guys were fishermen. When Jesus called them to follow him, he told them, you will no longer fish for fish, you will fish for men. You will be called out of your environment so that you will join me in reaching others with this message. I've called you to this. Before this, on, G on, on Jesus' way to the cross, there's a moment where Peter denies Jesus three times. And um, the story is something, is something that Jesus said would happen and Peter didn't want to accept that and he thought he would be above that and rise above denying Jesus. But actually we find that, that, that Peter denies Jesus three times and he runs away crying his heart out, the Bible tells us, because he's just so sorrowful at what, um, what he's done. He thought he was the best friend that Jesus could have had. And as the story unfolds and as Jesus is crucified and then as he rises from the dead, Peter is still living with this sense of remorse and guilt and hurt and pain from his actions. And we see here that instead of Peter being in a place where he's being led by the Spirit of God, by the call of God on his life to reach people with the, God, with the good news of message of Jesus. Hey, he's risen. This is the message they should have been telling people at the time. He's risen. He's not dead anymore. Instead, Peter is overcome by his thoughts. And he invites others to go fishing with him again. And it says that they go out into their boat, but that night they caught nothing. I kind of want to say, serves you right, but they caught nothing. What a painful experience. You can go and read what else happens there. But here's two ways that people live guided every day. We all do, right? We all are guided by my wants, my flesh. We're all guided by our, our, my, my thoughts, my, my mind. Those are not wrong. We, but we mustn't allow them to be the total guide of our life. This is where I want to introduce that there's an everyday guide that we should live naturally with. And we've got to apply this to our lives. And this is the Spirit of God. Um, for some reason, it doesn't always come easy to us. Um, I, I really believe that the Spirit of God leads or inspires people every day. Um, as followers of Jesus, we know this intently. We should know it intently. Um, but I think there are people who haven't realized what the Lord has done for them that, that live like this. And I think it's something to do with the intuitive unction that people have to make decisions in key moments. I think sometimes that's the Spirit of God leading. And just to say, the Spirit will never contradict the goodness of God. The Spirit is God himself. And so he will only lead people in the good things. So, you know, I'm not saying now that everybody's intuition um, and sense of making a decision is always the right one. Um, but I do think that that is, is a way of just helping people to understand, you know, hey, this is what the Spirit of God is like. I don't always hear him say, Matthew, turn the kettle on. You, you need to do this cup of tea now because if you don't, you'll be late. Um, I don't hear the Holy Spirit say stuff like that. Um, but I sometimes have a sense of the Holy Spirit just causing me to step into something and to follow him on something. And there's something so freeing, liberating, um, spacious about living guided by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus created an anticipation for us, for the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit guides us in the way of Jesus. If you turn with me to John chapter 14, uh, verses 26 to 27, um, we read Jesus say these things. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you 
all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The helper, the Holy Spirit sent by God, promised by Jesus, sent by God to us so that we can follow him as he leads us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He will teach us. This is what Jesus says. He will teach us and he will bring to remembrance. We are guided in the way of Jesus. So, you know, when we get to those moments where we're at the side of the road and we need the, we need the guide to tell us it's safe to cross. This is the moment where we should be relying on the Holy Spirit. If we don't know where to turn, we should be relying on the Holy Spirit. We can make decisions with our minds. We can uh, make decisions that, that are, are fleshly if we want to. But pair that in with the Holy Spirit so that we're making sure that actually my life lives guided in the way of Jesus. But there's a second thing that Jesus also says in John chapter 16. I want to, and Norm just jump in between a couple of chapters here, but John chapter 16 verses 13 to 15. The Holy Spirit guides us not only in the ways of Jesus, but he guides us in the glory of Jesus. John 16, 13 to 15 says that greater love has no one. Am I in the right one? Sorry, I'm in chapter 15. Mistake, wrong chapter. Mm -hmm. Chapter 16, uh, verse 13 says, When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me for he will take what is mine and declare it to you and so what what this is showing to us is that Jesus's word his message was hey guys the Holy Spirit is going to be your guide he's going to guide you in the ways that you see me live with and operate and function from but he's also going to guide you in my glory think back to that picture of uh, a person who is blind, being guided by the guide dog. Um, a simple analogy. I, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to make sure that from this moment on, you see yourself walking into every situation, every room, every relationship, every conversation, every moment of decision, Paired by, empowered by, filled with our guide, the Holy Spirit. He's, the Holy Spirit is not just for LaRue, or for Bronwyn, or for Michelle, or for Mike, or for you, or just for me. The Holy Spirit is God's gift for all of us. And I want to encourage you, in every moment, let the Spirit be your guide. I live a life guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to invite uh, LaRue and um, Bronwyn just to come back and to join us. We're going we're gonna to pray. I want to invite you to pray um, as we pray together um, right now. And um, if this is new for you, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. If this is new for you, if the Holy Spirit is new for you, fantastic. Um, and to everybody else who's here in the hot spot, I want to invite you to just pray this prayer with me. As we just, once again, we look back to that, that, that first word, I surrender my life to the, the Lordship of Christ. That's the starting point. And when we recognize the Lordship of Christ in our lives, it, it, gives, it gives something of a, a basis from which to, to do life from in a way that's healthy, but also gives context and understanding to the Holy Spirit who guides us. And so let's just pray. I want to invite you to pray this simple prayer with me right now. Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Please say that with me. Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I'm tired. I am done with living life. I'm done with living life. Guided by wants and my thoughts alone. Guided by wants and my thoughts alone. Those parts of me are tired. Those parts of me are tired. Today I ask Today for a fresh awareness of your Spirit who guides. Make yourself real to me. 
Guide me, Holy Spirit. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Let me hear your voice. Let, Let me, me hear your voice. Let me receive your gifts. Let, Let me receive, receive your gifts. Overflow through me, Holy Spirit. Overflow through me, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.